Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Friday, July the 15th, race number nine at Saratoga. It's the grade three Forbidden Apple. $175,000 is the purse. Older turf horses going a mile on the inner. Let's take a peek at this field. Scan the QR code for race of the day access on your mobile device, and you can play this race and the entire Saratoga card on Friday with your DRF Bets account. Mike, it's great to see a big field in here, and if you give set piece pace, you know he's going to come running. It's all about whether he gets a trip. Yeah, he's going to get to save some early ground in this race, though. That's a that's a positive for him. His last race was really good, um, and it does feel like this race is going to set up the right way for him. Dan, he's, he's supposed to be really tough in here. It certainly does. And we'll queue up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. Get Smoke in the number nine has a lot of speed. Wolfie's Dynaghost has shown speed. The four yes and yes is stretching out with tactical speed. Even Analyze it on occasion has shown some speed. So this pace should be a fair to fast. Yeah, it, do, it does feel like they're going to go in this race. Certainly, you know, the two horses that the, that the pace projector is sort of highlighting there, the two and the nine. I mean, that's just sort of their each of their running styles. There, they just go forward in their races, and they want to be part of the pace. So I'm assuming they go. A couple others could go. This pace should be should be at least honest. Set piece the number one is likely to go favored at post time. He was second in the four star Dave, a Grade One race last year. He's only run twice this year for Brad Cox. The first race was not very good. The Makers forty six miles. So Brad gave him a little bit of class relief last time out at Pimlico. Here's the dinner party on Christmas Saturday. It was a race which on paper didn't have a lot of speed. Maybe the pace was slightly faster than how the paper said it would play out. But still, he overcame a moderate pace and just kicked these horses down on the stretch. It was a strong performance. Yeah, not a great field, um, but exactly what you wanted to see from set piece. Um, just sat back. He always traveled in this race. He won it very comfortably at the end, as you can see there. Off the layoff in the maker's Mark Mild and just got way too rank and headstrong in there. That's not really him. Um, I guess he was just a little fresh off the layoff there. And he wouldn't settle. But when he settles and gets a clean run, he comes home hard. But that's his running style. You know he's not going to break very sharp from the gate. He's always going to be near the back of the pack. And they got to go fast, and he's got to get a trip. But if he does kick, you saw what he can do. He's a very talented horse. Wolfie's Dynaghost is very versatile. He's good on turf. He's good on dirt. He's good on synth. And he ran okay last time out in the poker at Belmont. Let's watch that race. It was a short field. And Wolfie's Dynaghost did all the best of it, Mike. He just kind of walked on the lead. They went a half and 48 and one while public sector, you see on the outside, the number four in the red and white cap tried to rally into these tepid fractions. Uh, Wolfie's Dynagos finished ahead of public sector. I'm not sure if he exactly ran the better race. Yeah, he didn't. Um, you know, it's just you know another, I guess, you know, solid performance for Wolfie's Dynagos, Dan. I still don't think he's as good on turf as he is on the other two surfaces. Um, you know, to me, he's just hard to take out of that race, especially with this pace project projecting to play out totally different. That race, half and 48 and one, they come home in 45 and change. He can't hold on. They might go eight lengths faster to the half in this uh, race. Wolfie's Dynagost is likely to be aggressively handled by Luis Saez, who is a good gate jockey. Mira Mission is very quietly turned into a reliable graded stakes horse for Ian Wilkes. He's won three of his last four. The only loss coming in the maker's markery was far from disgraced. Last time out on the Turf Classic, that was a race at Churchill Downs. The pace was pretty quick. He kind of made the first move into the race, took it over. I was excited. I needed him that day. And he just couldn't seal the deal with Santine. I was a little bit disappointed he lost, but how can he knock three consecutive triple-digit buyers? And he might be a playable price. Uh, yeah, just a little underrated, I guess. And he certainly comes into this race in good form. Um, he ran fine last time. I didn't think, you know, that was the Turf Classic is a race that usually comes up really strong, it seems like. I thought it was a pretty weak race this year. Um, that's not to knock what Mira Mission did in there because he ran well. And he's got great tactical speed. I mean, there's plenty to like about this horse. We'll see what kind of price he is. Then, I, you know, he can obviously win here. I don't think I would take too short a price on him. It'll be interesting to see if he wants to go a smidge more than a mile. The Turf Classic thus far has produced three next out winners. One of them, Tribuvan, won the Manhattan with a 108 buyer. Yes and yes certainly deserves a chance in this race for David Donk. He's three for three since the trainer change this season. All of those races in sprints. Let's watch his last race. I love that Donk's gotten through his conditions with this horse. First level, second level. Here's the third level allowance. Yes and yes showing his good tactical speed, sitting just off the pace, and he's going 
going to hold off the late kicker to win. Buyer speed figures going the right way, but he's going to need to take another forward move as he tries a new distance in a likely faster pace scenario. Yeah, a lot working against him here, but they're stepping him up at the right time. He's in really good form. He's run well in, in all three of his starts since the, they switched him to Donk and brought him back this year. Good performance there. Really good effort, too, back when they went seven with him, um, Dan, because he got, you know, sort of shut off on the rail on the stretch there, had the alter course, still managed to get up. You know, I don't know if he's going to be quite as good going this long. He's in great form right now. The number five clear vision was in excellent form over the winter at Gulfstream Park. He was second in the claiming crown race and then second off the claim. He upset the grade three tropical turf, utilizing his good positional speed in that race. Tougher competition in his next two starts. Didn't exactly fire in those races. I like that they gave him a small break. He came back last time out at Gulfstream. He probably gained fitness from that race, but this is a step up in class. And again, he's a front runner that could be hurt by the pace. Yeah, I didn't like that about him. I mean, he's run some some very nice races. It was a very good claim for these connections. Um, and they're doing a good job with this horse. They've just picked out a, a really tough spot for him here, especially with the way this pace projects to play out. A runner-up from the last race came back to run second in a handicap on the Tapita service, only an 86 buyer. Analyze it really began his career for Chad Brown, like a horse that was going to show some potential. And then he kind of got a case of the nibbles, seconds, thirds, fourths, dropping close photos. And then he disappeared for almost two years. Chad's kept on going with him. They gelded him before his most recent start. And he ran okay, I guess, in the cliffhanger last time out his seasonal debut. Let's watch that performance and analyze it. Saved ground in mid-pack behind a legitimate pace. He got a nice trip along the inside here to scooch into the pocket. The rail's open. He has an opportunity to get through. Doesn't really do so. Finishes evenly. All in all, an okay step in the right direction, I think, in his first start off the layoff. But he's got to do better. Yeah, he does. He does have some better races to get to. It's, you know, what you were alluding to earlier. I mean, it's a little bit surprising uh, even that he didn't turn out to be really good the way that he started his career, you know, distance was never his thing. I think that was part of the problem. Um, and then, you know, that long layoff probably just really took its toll on him. Obviously, something went really wrong with the source that he never really panned out. Um, but boy, he has a he has a big race in him when he's in the mood. I, I found it hard to like him in here that I did not like his race at Monmouth last time. Um, but I, you know, listen, I won't be surprised if he's competitive in this race. Well, his, some of his better races have been when it's on the lead. He's also shown the ability to sit just off. And I think Jose Ortiz is just going to break with Analyze It, let the speeds go, tuck into a good spot in the second flight, try to get the jump on the true closers turning for home. The sixth finisher of the cliffhanger did come back to win a third level allowance on Tapita with a 92 buyer. We saw public sector just miss second behind Wolfie's Dynaghost in the poker last time out. He was certainly pace compromised in that race. And then the time before in the Turk Classic, it was his first start off the last Layoff. They asked him to go to mile and an eighth. I think you can argue this horse is dirtied up and he finally gets a setup. Yeah, I think all those things are true. I mean, I, he didn't run well in the turf classic. Um, you know, I mean, I guess just that they ran him in that race is probably a good sign. Um, so maybe you just want to be a little lenient on him for that performance. He ran fine last time. He had no chance to win that race. He just missed a head bob for second in there. I thought he ran fine. And he was a good three-year-old. Not only he was a good three-year-old, Dan, he was a progressive three-year-old, it felt like. He's two for two over this inner turf course here at Saratoga. Um, I feel like he could take a really big step forward in this race. And both of those wins on the course last year came in graded stakes events. I'm expecting a, a better performance from him third off the layoff, especially given the pace scenario. I don't mind what Arad Ortiz did with the tone last time out. We saw that in the dinner party. On paper, there was no speed whatsoever. And Arad was like, that's probably the only way I can beat set piece is if I get the big jump on him. And he tried that on the backstretch. He had the lead turning for home and set piece just ran him over. This is a consistent horse who's taken a step forward with blinkers on, but the pace is likely to be a lot hotter this time around. Yeah, they've done, he's another horse that was claimed uh, a while ago, and they've done a really good job with this horse. Uh, Maker has gotten the, gotten the most out of this horse since he's taken over. Um, you know, I, I can't say that I love any of his races, Dan, and I didn't want to bet him in this race, um, but it's hard to really knock what he's been doing on the racetrack. He shows up and he runs every time. Get Smokin's a grade two winner at a mile. He took the Hill Prince as a three-year-old over Boggy going at Belmont. Now, he's had an interesting campaign, hasn't he? They ran him in the Tampa Bay uh, off of a long layoff to start his season. Not a bad effort at all behind Cheryl Spite, who's having a pretty good year. Odd spot, to say the least, I would say, in Dubai, cutting him all the way back to six furlongs. Last time out at Churchill Downs, he ran well. He made a legitimate pace, I thought. 
Again, though, he's supposed to beat admission office, a horse that was coming off a huge layoff. Yeah, he was off a huge layoff in there. Admission office did run really well in that race. Um, but I'm with you. I kind of feel like that's a race Get Smoke is probably supposed to win. Um, and in a lot of ways, that's the only real problem I have with this horse, Dan, is that he doesn't win that often. And when he does win, it's usually just a case of where he gets control of a, a relatively moderate pace and they can't run him down. And that's not to say that he can't run a good race when he has to go faster because he's done that several times, too. It just feels like the only times that he ever wins is when he has control of the pace. And that's probably not going to happen here. Number 10, City Man, is a very consistent New York Red going out for Joel Rosario, Christophe Clement, stakes winner at a mile, three starts back. Although I just thought he got a perfect scenario, tucking in behind the leaders in the pocket and then getting out to win very easily over Sanctuary City. Last two races, I'm not holding the Fort Marcy against him over a wet turf course. The Kingston, a little bit disappointing, although he just had nowhere to run at certain points. Yeah, he didn't get a good, a particularly good ride uh, from Rosario last time. It's odd to go back and watch that race too, because the other, the the speed of the race, um, some like it hot brown decided not to go in there, and it left sort of City Man on the lead early in there. And for whatever reason, Rosario just didn't want it, so he didn't go on with it. He wound up in behind horses, and then he just got totally shut off through the stretch. You know, I don't know if he was going to win that race or not, but he certainly lost whatever chance he had in the stretch of that race. It's not a bad performance at all. I liked his danger hour, but as you've already pointed out, he got a perfect trip in that race. Um, but listen, he might get another perfect trip in here, Dan. He's a very tactical horse. He could really fall into the right spot here. I think a mile is actually this horse's best distance. I really don't feel like he wants to go much further than a mile. Um, there, there's plenty to like about him. I couldn't talk myself into him, but I'll probably use him if he's a good price. I think he should be a good price. He's the kind of horse you think might get lost in the shuffle with the horses like Set Peace, the Chad Brown trainees, uh, and also the Ian Wilkes runner expected to take money. Scuttlebuzz won four of five starts for Rudy Rodriguez sprinting, and then they tried him in the grade one Jiper last time out, and he just really didn't fire his best shot. Uh, he did still finish ahead of two next out winners. One of them would win an allowance at Woodbine with a 102 buyer on the Tapita surface. Do you get the feeling he's more of a closing sprinter than a true two turn type? Because he's probably going to get the right setup. Yeah, I do. I do get that feeling that he's a closing sprinter. I'm also not, you know, totally convinced that he's a graded stakes horse either. Although he's really, he's a really nice horse, and they've done a great job with him. Um, I don't know. I just thought he was really hard to like in here. They bumped him up in class in a Jiper last time over a distance that that really suits him. And, you know, listen, he was just in way too tough there. He had no trip trouble in that race. He just wasn't good enough to be competitive. And it's not like he gets, you know, significant class relief here, Dan. His prior races over a mile, they're not terrible, um, but they don't give him a real chance in here. Tough post for Sanctuary City, number 12, another consistent New York bread. And if you want to make the argument that public sector was maybe compromised by pace last time out, I guess you could make that argument for Sanctuary City, who tried to come from off of the pace. The one advantage I guess Sanctuary City had was that he was down inside and was able to save some ground, a situation that, that might not occur from this post position against this tougher field. Yeah, I mean, from this from this outside post and the way that this race, you know, projects to set up with a fast pace, they're just supposed to let him drop back to last and try to make one run in here at a price. Um, and he's a horse who has consistently shown that if you just sit back with him and let him run, he will make a run. He doesn't win that often, but he's a really, really nice horse and he's underrated and this race could set up for him. And if it rains and this race is unfortunately washed off the turf, Art Collector, the 13, will be odds on. He won the Woodward last year, and this would be his first start since the Saudi Cup. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for all the latest DRF TV video offerings. Top pick time for the Forbidden Apple. It's our feature race at the spa on Friday. Mike, you're sticking with public sector. Uh, I think it'll be a fair price for Chad. You're going to get the right setup, a 180 degree different pace situation than last time. Yeah, that's how I looked at it too. I did think it could be a fair price in here. Um, I just, I definitely wouldn't want too short a price on him, but I do think he could take a step forward. Dan, I thought he ran fine last time. I thought it was a nice rebound effort for him in a race where he really had no chance to win. He should have a chance to win this race. 
have pace, set piece will rally. It's all about whether he can work out a trip from the inside post, maybe not get bottled in behind horses. I'm expecting him to run on late. Unfortunately, I don't think the value is there. One of the more fascinating horses to me is, yes, 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 the four horse. I mean, he is taking a giant step up in class, but boy, he's been in the right form, uh, and he's going to be a giant price. Six, seven, one, twelve, ten for Mike. One, four, three, eight for me. It's the Forbidden Apple. It's worth two stakes at the spa on Friday.